Support the channel on patreon.com slash manlightfoot. Boy, I tell you now, I was having a feeling that we were starting to enter a major drought for animated shows. A lot of good stuff was ended in 2022, and it didn't seem like we were on the cusp of a good renaissance. Amphibia had its finale, Owl House got shortened to a three special last season that's still airing. As of this video, Tuka and Birdie got cancelled. A second time. The Cuphead show also got cancelled. In fact, Netflix in general has just been on a major roll with cancelling stuff more than a teenager on Twitter. It was looking mad bleak. So much so, I genuinely was starting to think things weren't really going to get much better. Sure, some new stuff like Velma came out recently, but it obviously wasn't going to invoke much confidence in people. If anything, it caused people to straight up regress on how they look at animated media. Seriously, people, learn to not watch it if you don't like it. Most of y'all shouldn't be privy to its finale and what happened in it. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that. But the big thing that was in my highest of anticipation was Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. From the moment I saw the poster for it, my hype went up. Then the trailers dropped and all I could say was... Save me! It had everything going for it. And now with the show finally dropping, I am blown away by it and I'm straight up singing. I it gave me what I wanted, but now I wanted to look at exactly why this invokes so much joy and what truly makes it magic. So let's go for a moonwalk with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Pun game came in pretty strong. To some, this may look like a typical girl power series. And to those people, I say, the guillotine is right there, please make sure your head doesn't make a mess. But for real, it stands on its own with how it carries itself. This is a show that knows what it wants to be and executes it pretty much flawlessly. It is interesting to find that this is based on a Marvel property. I'll admit, I heard of the comics, but know nothing about them except that I've seen Devil Dinosaur in that one Hulk animated series. It certainly stands out above the previous Marvel shows that didn't really have a unique look to them. It's important to point out that this series is made by Disney TVA rather than Marvel's animation group, so that's kind of the big reason why it looks and works differently than other Marvel animated shows since it's animated more like a regular Disney show. Also, it has Lawrence Fishburne as an executive producer, so doesn't hurt to have some Morpheus money in your corner. The main premise is a good one to invest interest in. It revolves around a highly intelligent girl named Lunella who one day builds a machine that makes an interdimensional portal that brings in a dinosaur that she named Devil. Now her and Devil fight crime in their neighborhood as Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur alongside Lunella's new best friend Casey. One of the biggest things that would make anyone stay for this show is the characters. Our main character Lunella Lafayette, Lafayette. I'm picking this horse by the rain, making red coats, weather with blood stains. No, not that Lafayette. Lunella is a 13-year-old girl who is basically a child prodigy. Of course, you gotta have that inspire the youth aspirations, it's just necessary. She is the resident genius in her family with a fun lust for life and science. She has a nice charisma to her that you just have to enjoy and makes her very likable. She pretty much outdoes all the kids in her class, she's just a total brainiac. Based on the dimensions of his fusion tank, I calculated his energy supply and then employed evasive maneuvers based- no! It is expected by the fact that she basically created portal technology. Now you're thinking with portals. Not that type of portal, but don't get it twisted. She's not a Mary Sue by any means. She's still a kid who can get way in over her head on things. A lot of the problems she faces end up being a result of her overlooking something or she might be the reason that bad things started happening. Very much going for the kid having to learn from their mistakes angle. Sometimes she can go into a situation without fully thinking it through. She can even doubt herself when she's run into a wall and struggling to figure out the solution. I, I fix things, you know, that's what I I'm good at. 
And I wanted to fix this too. If I'm supposed to be so smart, why couldn't I figure it out? She very much has a good relatability factor that shines. Anyone can relate to doubting themselves, but what makes them somebody worth rooting for is the fact that they pick themselves up and get back to fighting. It's a common formula, but it's a very effective one. With her being a superhero, you gotta talk her abilities. Now, she doesn't have any superpowered anythings. She gets by using gadgets that she creates, so her greatest weapon is her ingenuity. Just a straight up genius would know how on butt kicking. What works with her is the fact that she's a street level hero which adds a better relatability to her and her situation. She wants to do right by her neighborhood which, let's face it, many black youth understand. That's why the community they go for is so good, but we'll talk about that later. But she's also held up by her partner in… heroics? Yeah that works. Devil. Now you would think Devil is just a simple creature and you'd be right. Pretty much he's a dinosaur that has all the qualities a dinosaur would have. Being big and ferocious, having tiny arms, acting like a dog. Okay, maybe not that last part unless you're Dexter. He's a playful fella that would fulfill every kid's dream of having a pet dinosaur. You can't tell me you wouldn't want one, come on now. Plus, he's easy to feed since all he wants is hot dogs. Though, there may be more to him than we know since his real name is a bit ominous. The literal translation is, terrifying fire beast who will bring about the end of all things. Lou and Devil have a fun relationship. It's in the vein of Devil sees her as his mom and she acts like it, but what works well about them is how sweet it all is. You get a strong sense of care between them, even when things get pretty rough. <laughs> Now, let me stop playing. Devil is such a playful guy. He's super expressive and you can't help but love him. Their dynamic works as a good brains and bronze deal. That's a classic one. But their friendship that they have is what elevates their bond. And they're ultimately not alone in general because they got a whole operation going. Casey is the best friend slash media manager of that operation. She's a fairly excitable social media whiz that is pretty fun and likable. Her and Lunella's bond comes across as a genuine one. She looks out for Lou and makes sure she doesn't get herself in trouble. They're just total gal pals. I will say I enjoy how they play off each other as well. It's just very reminiscent of what you would expect kids to speak to one another. It comes across as how modern teenagers speak. None of their dialogue feels forced. Oh, the shoulders. You moving the shoulders. <sighs> Hi, Case. I see you. You know what? There's no way. I'm gonna let one dumb little comment bother me. It has that feeling of knowing how young people would talk to each other without feeling like an adult trying to imitate how teenagers would talk to their peers. Basically, it doesn't reek of How do you do, fellow kids? Now, I would have more to say about her, but there's not much for me to go off of. Hopefully in future episodes, they'll give her more of a spotlight. But I can at least point out that she might be part cat. Break it! Seriously, what human gets scared like that? This is a strong main cast, but it all doesn't stop there in terms of characters. Lunella's family is a very fun one. There is a strong sense of black positivity that you get from them. The family acts like a proper family that constantly shows love and support, which is honestly great to see, versus the stuff where they might be bickering or there's some level of tension or just too much tension. They just have an infectious attitude to them that gives you those warm fuzzies. You could see many connecting with them since they come across as a real family, especially one that goes through the struggles that many black families have gone through. You know, having to deal with rent or making sure you're on time with payments. Another angle that I'm so glad they touched on with the family is hair love. I'm so happy that they have a positive message about proper hair care. It even talks about the dangers of relaxer. Alright, go ahead devil. Tell me how cute I am. Ooh, 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 that hurt. That hurt to look at. That is a shame and a half. This is why you avoid chemicals when it comes to your hair, people. Love your hair. But the way they go about discussing the importance of natural hair, I just absolutely adore. So they tell us our natural hair is sloppy, unkept, unprofessional, or even ugly. But they're wrong. Our hair is versatile, textured, beautiful, political, powerful, bold. It reflects our culture. I always appreciate some good old black pride. It's just a message 
further use that I can always get down with. But what helps make them different is how the community comes together. I mean it when I say I love how the community is played in this. Everyone knows each other and clearly looks out for one another. There's subtle hints at a community being there for each other because at the end of the day, the rest of the world ain't coming to help, so working with those near you is better than hoping somebody on the outside will come and help. You see them coming through to stand by Moon Girl and help her out with a problem. I love that they go for the community actually liking Moon Girl as opposed to her being hated and having to get them on her side or something like that. Sort of like an opposite Spider-Man where some like him and some don't. The fact that it's a mixed race community is just gravy. It all comes together so well you'll end up wishing you lived here yourself or maybe have some more appreciation for the community you live in. This is a fantastic cast to follow, but obviously there's more to this show that holds it all together. The dynamic style, the music, and the animation. God is it phenomenal work. I'm pretty sure many of you will be excited to hear it's animated by one of the godlike studios of animation, Flying Bark. <laughs> oh god, I think that was too much levels of awesomeness that they overloaded. Um, just cut to commercial. this show starts off with style I mean it they make it absolutely clear what type of show this is and what type of characters you're gonna get it should be an Olympic sport with how they craft the introduction to the concept literally like the first few seconds of the show immediately make you fall in love with it it does great in establishing so much in so little time we see who Lunella is her personality how she interacts with her community and the community that loves her we also get a sense of the very charming style the show is going for and the musical aspect of thing. Honestly, the whole show has this great aspect to it where it's all about telling you a lot without overwhelming the audience. When they set things up, it all flows organically. So when the villain of the week pops up, they don't feel like they came out of nowhere. It all ends up connecting back to something that occurred earlier. The way they do the humor also works well. It feels organic to who the characters are and just plays off of that, cementing it as a character-driven series. Though, they can get a little crazy with some fourth wall jokes that they do. Loving the enthusiasm, but what if no one sees? What if you can't take her out? Well, then we get canceled after one episode. Hey, hold on now, stop, stop, chill, chill. Come on now, chill, 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 yo. Yo, my man, my man, my man, chill, 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 chill yo, chill, chill. There's this pure positivity oozing from these few minutes that stays with the series, not to mention how unapologetically black it all is. It gives the energy that says, yes, we're black and this is how we are. It showcases different aspects to being black that I can't get enough of. And one way they do it is a bit through the music. With it being a musical type of series, the animation and soundtrack work in congruent with each other. There's these musical moments that happen in the fights that's just brimming with style. From the color palette switch to the musicality that's on display, it's almost like the Class of 3000 music segments, but with action and music fully connected to what's happening in the story. Usually it starts off with Moon Girl putting on her mixtape or a tape falling into a random music player for the final battle that ends up happening. It's like if flash mobs were even more spontaneous and had fighting and had coordination. Look at that mess she calls hair. Are you honestly for real? Yep, it's for real indeed. My hair defies gravity. I appreciate you care enough to stop your day and ask me. I swear these songs are gonna have so many people blast them on repeat in their playlist. They go as far as to get popular songs in the mix. Ain't nobody thought they'd hear a Childish Gambino song in a Disney show. My aunt had no Japanese. Huh? Yo girl, she Japanese. Huh? Oh, you frickin' vultures. The sequence with it just gets you all revved up like a Fisker when it starts up. Fiskers don't make noise when they start up, just so you know. 
thank you for that random knowledge. Even the background music is memorable enough that I would love to get it on an album or get the SoundCloud. It just feels so good to have a series with a proper catchy theme song now. And it's real good that there's a full version of it. Y'all don't know how many times I get mad that the intro is a banger, but it's only 30 seconds long. Like, come on now, I get capitalism has to ruin our lives, but you can't ruin our good theme songs. But the thing that elevates this series style is the animation. It has some awesome animation that it shows off for both the action and the music. The best reason for that is that it's done by the incredible flying bark. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're not worthy! We're stuck! Total Masters at work with this. They utilize limited animation in the most flawless ways when it comes to their previous projects and there's no exception here. There's simple one frame movement that's meant for comedic timing that's very effective and efficient so they can pop off on the action and the dynamic styles when they need to. And boy, do they pop off. There's so many styles from the more sketchy character design to the blocky angular graffiti like backgrounds to even simpler comic styles that can come into play as Devil's way of seeing things like when he's running through the city for the first time. I just love the line work they have on the outlines. It's so visually pleasing. The movement of the characters can range from smooth to jaggy in a way that all flows so well. There's just so many gears all working across the board from each other and just coming in perfect harmony to create all this amazingness on screen. It all meshes so well with the urban aesthetic that this show has. There's this great feeling of love and care bursting out of every frame. You just know the crew was all having as much fun as they could with this series. That's just the great thing about this that feels like a pure labor of love. Like everybody really wanted to put their best foot forward and they very much did. They did the damn thing. We need to give them their props. Come on y'all. They did it. They very much showed out for this. Come on. Always be proud of who you are, little girl. No matter what the world tells you. There's always gonna be a hater out there somewhere. At least we know how to handle it. <laughs> what did he say? He said, this is his home now. And it's worth fighting for. <laughs> I'm worth fighting for. There's no denying that this is basically my new favorite thing. For it to hit you on all these different levels and just be that good, that's masterful. The characters all have a genuine feel to them that so many could relate to on some level. I could definitely see it as a means to inspire little black girls. It just has appeal across the boards. The unapologeticness to it is definitely going to be a reason people come back to watch it every time. It'd be crazy if this wasn't talked about in black circles. The positive angle makes this a very pleasant watch that I just cannot get enough of. If you're an animation fan, you'll love it. If you're an action fan, you'll love it. If you want heartfelt sincerity, there's just an abundance in this show. If you're even a music fan, you're definitely going to love this. It's fairly new and there's some uncertainty going around with the animated shows nowadays, but with something like this, it could use as much support as it can. There's just pure magic and excellence on display that can't be denied. It hits on all the levels and it should be appreciated for that. They did good by making sure this got the advertising it needed. Needed. There's only a few episodes out right now, but this is something I feel is going to grab a lot of people. It certainly was something that was able to revitalize my love for animation, and that's something I will never take for granted. But that's just a thought. <laughs> Thank you.